Schwartz, who's organized this whole group coming today, we had to cancel him at the last minute. We were trying to set up the, the chairs distantly and all that kind of stuff. And it was such a sad and, and terrible thing that we had to do that. And he volunteered later to do a virtual session for us on, on Zoom, just without a live audience. But we're so happy to have him back here now. And he's brought some great musicians with him. So um, we're going to have Nora singing some songs for us in Gaelic. We heard them practicing some, even some Gaelic songs and some old traditional ballads from, from Ireland. We're going to have <coughs> Tim on guitar, who with, plays with uh, a Rise and Go, and he's an excellent musician. And we have Nick also, who's uh, a piper. So this is the first time I think we've ever had a piper here. So, and look, oh, he must like piping. That's, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's great, you know. So we're real excited to have everybody here. Let's welcome uh, the whole band, Pat Reynolds and friends, and we'll let Pat introduce people further if they want. traditional music and um, and uh, I suppose this is music that uh, we play together often enough uh, you might say it in our parlors or in our kitchens perhaps or dining rooms wherever we can sometimes in pubs or at least that was the case uh, before the unpleasantness of the last couple of years uh, so we'll get right started uh, we'll start with a couple of jigs uh, Whelan's and uh, the lark on the strand One, two, three, four.
Jim and Jean so much for um, not only for having us for having us back again, but for, for keeping the the whole coffee house going. I think they've done tremendous work over the last couple of years. <laughs> People did just close down, of course. So it was, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it was a lot, of, a lot of work, and obviously, commitment and dedication. So thank you. Um, so we're going to play a couple of reels now, three, in fact, uh, if I can count. Uh, and um, they are, are called Jenny's Wedding. Uh, the second is the Maid in the Cherry Tree, and the third is the is the Mistress of the House, I think. Yeah. And uh, so these. Uh, these latter two are um, are a set that were played by uh, a piper that uh, that I think Nick follows pretty assiduously, uh, Tommy Reck. Uh, so we're always looking for new tunes and, and tunes that uh, resonate with us in some way. And uh, so this uh, piper from Dublin, Tommy Reck, uh, some lost recordings or forgotten about recordings were rediscovered and reissued. And so anyway, it's interesting to hear what he played. And, those second pair of tunes are uh, tunes that, that, that he recorded. So, okay. Okay. Anything Man. else to add, Nick? Uh, no. No, that's good. <laughs> pipes, uh, the tunes that suit the pipes in this kind of music are like a little subset. So there are some tunes that are, you know, we kind of go, oh, that's a fiddle tune <laughs> for some things. And then there are other things where they just uh, they, they just sit well in the pipes, and these three tunes are an example of that. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
this point, we'd like to uh, introduce uh, Nora Revenov, who's going to come up and sing a song. I'll let her introduce it. Hi, everybody. Hey. Thank you. Want me on this one? Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. All right, thanks. So uh, this song's in the Irish language, and I collected it a few years ago because I feel like there are lots of songs in Irish about uh, rogues and ramblers and men behaving badly, and you rarely find songs about cheeky teenage girls behaving badly. And uh, so I want to tell you a little bit about what it's about, just so that you're listening for it if anybody here doesn't speak fluent Irish. Um, so it's, uh, there used to be this thing, especially in Western Ireland in the warm season, um, subsistence farmers and herdsmen would go out into the boolie in the summer to sort of graze the flocks. And the folks that would usually be set up there were often the teenage girls alone, and they got to sleep out there overnight and sort of have their own time and space. Uh, so this is a song um, about a woman looking back on the days when she was a teenage girl in the boolie. She's talking about um, sort of calling to the cows out in the pasture, but the way she's saying it, she might actually mean some of the young men that were out there. Um, it's a little cheeky. Ready? Yeah.
well, I, I could. Uh, this, this tune is called The Morning Thrush, and it was written by a piper named John Ennis about 100 years ago, and he, uh, I think, won some kind of prize in a uh, flaw or a con competition in Ireland. His son, Seamus Ennis, uh, became one of the best and best regarded of the pipers in the second half of the 20th century, which is a long time ago now. It, it was. <laughs> when, when I was growing up in the 20th century, Nick, um, wow, yeah. I, I got into Irish music. Um, I don't, may, this, may, this record may be familiar to some of you out there who like fiddle music. Uh, one of those Green Linnet compilations started with just 45 seconds of Seamus Ennis talking in, in oh. English. Couldn't understand a word he said, but it was lovely anyway. <laughs> he, he was a real uh, showman, among other things. But uh, okay, so the morning thrush, inspired supposedly by the, the singing of a bird uh, in the morning when the fellow woke up. Uh, who can say what really happened? One, two, three. music we think of as being quite old, uh, you know, that last tune written 100 years ago, and of course going back a couple more hundred years where most of these uh, tunes came from. 
But uh, it's a very much a living tradition, so there's composers writing tunes all the time, and so we're you know, trying to keep up with them. <laughs> and uh, so I want to play a couple of, couple of tunes written by a fairly famous composer from East Galway, uh, not far from where uh, I grew up, uh, called Paddy Fahey. And uh, he definitely wrote uh, fiddle tunes. Uh, in fact, he wrote them such that I think he wants to exclude all other instruments from playing them. Yes. <laughs> uh, in terms of the keys and the arpeggios he chose and things like this. And we'll see how far I get uh, in it as well. But uh, so I want to uh, play a couple of hornpipes. To make things a little bit more confusing, he, um, he didn't name any of his tunes. They're all known as Paddy Fahis. And he wrote hundreds of them. Uh, so, you know, if you pick up a CD of fiddle music, you'll see a couple of Paddy Fahey tunes on there. Uh, some were published in, in a master's thesis uh, some years ago. And uh, the author of that, uh, that's how I feel about them too, and numbered them. And so, uh, and I'm playing Patty Fahey's Hornpipes number one and number two. Okay. <laughs> Enough talk. <laughs> but uh, I um, stand to be corrected. Uh, so uh, more, more uh, 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 idiosyncratic names. So the first one is Sweeney's Dream, uh, famously recorded by a fiddle player anyway, from Sligo, right? Oh, I, know. I think Patty Clorin recorded it. Oh, I could be wrong. Uh, and uh, the second one, uh, Man of the House. Sweeney's Dream, Man of the House. 
Shall I? Please. Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> piece for you now. This is actually a Scottish tune uh, written a little over a hundred years ago, I think, by a man named James Scott Skinner. Um, he, what did he play, Pat? Do you, was he a fiddle player? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So he wrote this tune uh, in memory of a friend of his, um, Hector MacDonald. Uh, the tune is called Hector the Hero. And I put this, um, I put this little arrangement of it together maybe five years ago. Um, I was on a gig in Florida for three weeks and feeling very homesick. Um, so towards the end of that, a friend showed up with a guitar and I played it for a few days and this is what came out.
uh, we're going to play uh, just one jig now, but it's, uh, I, it's in the category of what I call big jigs. Multiple yes. parts to them. How many in this one, Pat? Uh, I'm not sure, really. Uh, <laughs> we, um, Good. We, I can't remember We know either. when it's sober. You know what I mean? We yeah. know when, it, when we've done them all. I think there's about six. Is there something like that? Yeah, that's a brown number. Mm. So, uh, Maybe you'll know when it's over. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, try yeah. to read your mind. It's the kind of thing that you don't think about in advance. You just <laughs> step onto the escalator with faith and hope. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, there's, there's a whole body of uh, these big jigs, and so I don't know. Like yeah. to play them. So we're yeah. playing the uh, Cherish the Ladies. Let's see, I can't remember how it starts. Okay. Here we go. Uh, one, two, three. higher than four when I'm playing music, but <laughs> so I, I don't know, maybe I got it wrong. Okay, uh, I'll take it for We'll write it down. Well, we'll so look at the tapes sure. afterwards, like football coaches. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll play one more uh, set of tunes uh, and then take a brief intermission. So uh, we've been telling you the names of all these tunes, uh, you know, which uh, of course have no bearing whatsoever on the music that's within them, but maybe, maybe Hector the Hero was the music was trying to evoke uh, the heroism of the, that character. My, my arrangement certainly was, yeah. 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 It's, a, it's an incredibly sad story. Yeah. Um, what, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, anyway, a lot of the tune names don't, don't uh, they're, they're whimsical. And uh, it's, you know, it's very hard to sometimes to put the names to the tunes or to remember the tunes, etc. So uh, during this COVID time when we haven't been playing out much, but you know, playing at home alone, uh, I started uh, putting together sets of tunes on, on a literary basis, that is, uh, on, on what their titles were. 
So uh, uh, we are playing a set of these tunes here. So the first one is uh, launching the boat. Uh, the second one is the steam packet. You'll get the theme soon. Uh, and then the third one is the ships are sailing. So uh, here we go, reels again. I just, I, I hadn't caught that, Pat. <laughs> this, you well, well done by you. You should play with us more often. Too. <laughs>
Dessert. So the text looks like you're right on the money for time. Yeah. How do we do that? It's your native smart smarts. <laughs>
been looking forward to this next one, Nick. Okay, good. So I'm, I'm going to try something a little different, and uh, um, uh, there's some risk involved, but isn't that, <laughs> isn't that, isn't that life, you know? So uh, there was a piper named Kerrigan who lived uh, in the second half of the uh, 19th century, and around it in the 1890s, I mean, he had a successful career in vaudeville playing the pipes. And then he, he bought a saloon or bar in New York, in Manhattan, right near uh, Times Square. It was called The Pleasant Hour. And uh, he would play the pipes in the afternoons, and then sometimes he would substitute playing on the pipes, so he would play the coffee pot. So I'm gonna just uh, you know demonstrate. Uh, there's an interview with him, I forget what year, um, and at the time of the interview, he said his favorite reel was uh, The Green Fields of America, which is what I shall uh, try. Try out. Good luck. See you. Thank you. <laughs> Ergonomic version of the tin whistle. Som sometimes holding the, the little thing, my my thumb gets oh, awfully uh, it's, awfully it's, tight. That looked that looked more comfortable. It's, it's dreadful. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> it's, it's really tough, and, and this is heavy. You know, okay. compared to a, a, a penny whistle. It takes okay. a lot of breath, doesn't it? Um, no. no. So here's a penny whistle. Actually, this is the equivalent. But, but this is a lot, it, it's just, it is awkward. Okay. Um, well, it was a nice thought. Well, now that's a thought, you know, and then, and then at the end of the act, you could... <laughs> I don't know. Oh. <laughs> or you could have dry ice in there. And oh. Have, uh, oh. Uh, smoke coming out. Yeah. Some people are so creative. Well, from the from the ridiculous <laughs> to the uh yes. Nora's gonna sing another song. Yeah, that's a really tough act to follow. <laughs> uh, no so uh, this is a song I collected from Maddie Britton, a friend of mine up in Cape Breton. Um has been working on a project at the Gaelic College where they're collecting and archiving all these old songs that are at risk of being lost. And kind of like what the song I sang earlier tonight, it's, you don't hear a lot of songs about cheeky teenage girls. You hear a lot about sainted mothers and holy mothers. And you don't hear a lot about regular, old, tired, exasperated, at the end of their rope mothers of babies. And this is a beautiful little lullaby that I love because it's just a little bit of a complicated feeling. of It's a mother who loves her little baby, but she is absolutely exhausted. And so she's saying, little boy, I'll lift you, even though you're a distraction from work. 
Little boy, I'll lift you up in the air where a thousand stars abide and down to the depths of the ocean where the little fishies swim. High up, high down, little boy, I'll lift you. Your mother is sometimes exhausted and at the very end of her rope. And you're too young to yet understand these complicated tears of your mother. <laughs> so this is called Iyavik. It's in Scott's Gaelic, but hopefully you'll forgive me for it not being there. Guitarist uh, Tim Ball is a oh, right multi-talented, <laughs> multi-instrumentalist. He just does this to get the compliments. Probably. You know. I looked right past that entry on the set list. I was all ready to pick up the other guitar. Uh, Where did I put my fiddle? <laughs> 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 
He's a great fiddle player as well. And uh, so we're, we thought we'd uh, have fun and play a fiddle duet. So um, we're going to play two reels uh, to add to the confusion around names. They're both called the Copper Plate. Uh, they uh, sometimes distinguish as the old and the new Copper Plate. So we'll be taking a survey afterwards just to see what people think, which is the old and the new. <coughs> Um, one, two, three, four. So um, uh, we're going to continue with another, um, continue with another, a different kind of uh, tune, uh, hop jigs. So they're different from the from the regular jigs that we've been playing, and uh, so they have a more jaunty uh, rhythm to them. 
So uh, we're going to play four different hop jigs all in a row. And uh, uh, their names for those taking notes, uh, it's Gorman's and then the Surround, which uh, was kind of recently became popular after being found in an old, old manuscript. I think the Surround refers to maybe a dance that was done to it. Then um, the Dusty Miller and, and uh, what's the last one? Tommy Hunts. Tommy Hunts, yes, of course. Who was he? Do we know? I was a player from Sligo, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think. Okay. One, two. Amongst yourselves, Pat and Nick. Right. Well, yeah. Pat and Nora, yes. Chat a little Nick, bit Nick about I mean. this song. So, this one's in English, so it should be easier to understand what it's about. But um, I collected it uh, from an old teacher of mine, Mern, who put it on an album, and I just picked it up because I liked it and I thought it was a lovely song. Um, and then I started 
seen it with these people, and they're like, that sounds, it's called The Leaving of Limerick. They said, that sounds just like a song called The Leaving of Liverpool. Yeah. And I was like, was it my teacher who stole it and changed the words to make it about Limerick? Or was it someone else? I'll have to look it up. Um, but it's, uh, The Leaving of Liverpool is usually sung as sort of a march. This is sort of a little bit more laid back. Um, but uh, how are you doing on that tune? Uh, still in a minute? We're still working on it. I should have known because I oh. had met that singing teacher in the work and she was teaching there at the time, so it's very suspicious that all the songs on the album ha just happened to be about that town. <laughs> Let's stick, with, let's stick with Limerick. We'll stick with Limerick for today, but keeping that filed away for next time. Oh, really? What's his called? Process. The true folk tradition. If you're not cheating, you're cheating yourself. I'm sorry, Nora. No worries. Um, maybe, maybe this is the time for the uh, the obligatory Illin pipe. Ooh. Uh, Do you want to give the pipe lecture? <laughs> that's that's, 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 that's that doesn't sound terribly appealing. Pipe lecture. <laughs> well. Yeah. Do you want the mic? Or, or my favorite, my favorite Ellen Pipe joke. Oh, what's the, oh, you mean that I told you? Yes, that one. You tell it better than I oh, do, well, maybe, probably. Uh, uh, so, there's lots of musical jokes, you know, that are disrespectful to any instrument. So there's a bunch uh, for the Ellen Pipes, of course, and um, my favorite is, uh, What's the difference between the Ellen pipes and a chainsaw? And a chainsaw has dynamic range. It can get louder and so Oh, I was thinking of a different one. I was thinking of one that's kind to them. Okay. It's, it's that on, on the way home, and if we are in a car wreck, you'll be the safest one because your instrument comes with seatbelt and airbags. Oh, that's a new one. Oh, okay. That's a new one to me. Play that, play that E again. Do we need to keep telling trad instrument jokes? No, uh, I think we're good. Okay, I have one about a fire on, but I'm glad I don't have to tell it. Okay. <laughs> this isn't really the song for jokes before. We'll have to, no, to I feel like we, let's all have a slight mood shift and feel wistful. Okay, a couple deep breaths.
going to uh, continue with a couple of hornpipes, back to hornpipes again. Um, and a couple of uh, whimsical names once more. The Taylor's Twist and uh, the Plains of Boyle, B-O-Y-L-E, uh, a town in Roscommon. <laughs> Tunes, at least the first one I think of from the the uh, Sligo tradition. Yes, I, I, I believe that's right. Okay. I, I'd say that. While I'm, while I'm getting in tune here, I'll see if I can multitask. Um, for those who are not Irish fiddle nerds like myself and Pat, um, back around a hundred years ago, there were a number of fiddle players from a very small part of um, the southern end, really, of County Sligo, who all found themselves in New York City around, around the same time that the recording industry was really getting off the ground, and they made a number of very influential recordings, um, influential both in the States and, and back over in Ireland. So the, the musical styles of County Sligo in New York City have been associated ever since then. It's true. Absolutely. Thank you. 
So we uh, like um, Tim's fiddle playing so much that we're asking him to play it once more. Uh, we thought that we'd have a have the combo of two fiddles in the pipes. Uh, as I was talking to uh, um, Kathy earlier, the sound of pipes and fiddle is a kind of a classic classic combination in, in Irish traditional music. Uh, so it, we want to enhance it with adding uh, Tim's fiddle to the mix. Is as that well. possible? I guess it's possible. <laughs> what, what is the correct ratio of pipes to fiddles? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. So we're going to play two um, two jigs. Uh, Jerry's beaver hat. So I guess that must be an old two, and they wore beaver hats. I think that's the best one of the night. I think that's the best. That's my favorite title. The title. Of the night. Yeah. We should have had a competition <laughs> on that. The la second one's called the Black Robe. Exactly. Or maybe that's my favorite. Now. Exactly who that was is lost to history. But anyway, uh, the Jerry P. Rat. Right. Okay. One, two, pleasure to uh, be here tonight and uh, to join you all. Uh, we're going to finish up uh, with one final set of reels and we're going to ask uh, Jim and Jean to join us up here as well as Nora uh, who also uh, is a great fiddle player and uh, just have one kind of rousing, rousing set of tunes. We're going to play a couple of reels of course 
And uh, these are also relatively recently composed, you know, in the last number of decades, by Father Kelly. And uh, uh, while he did name uh, some of his tunes, uh, they have become known as Father Kelly's. And so we're playing Father Kelly's number one and number two. Oh, if you're sure. Okay. Yes, in the Patty Patty tradition. <laughs> You all set? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, just, uh, I came over here so I wouldn't poke you in the eye. Thank you. <laughs> It's so nice to sit and play music. It is. It's so nice yeah. to sit and play music with other yeah. people. After or work. other people. Thank you all for coming out. Okay, Father Kelly's, one and two. One, two, three.